thought it would be poll headline news. Right. It should be. Because every media in the country got it. So I'd be sending it out to everyone. What of are you going to do when 92% think like us? Well, why isn't the media talking about that? That's a big deal that a majority of New Yorkers believe what we believe in the new major Zogby poll. Why isn't that a major issue? And what is the establishment going to do when everybody thinks like we do? And on Monday, that Zogby poll was released that showed 50% of New York City residents believe the government had foreknowledge and made a conscious decision not to intervene. 50% of the people who live in New York believe that. Well, it's time for a serious investigation. Then CNN conducted its own poll on Anderson Cooper's program 360. After an hour-long show where he and others demonized members of the 9-11 skeptics movement, they conducted their own poll, and an amazing 90% of respondents out of over 7,000 believe that there was a U.S. government cover-up. All the people involved in the cover-up of September 11th have gotten wealthy off of it or gotten even richer. And then now, September 11th is being used to kill our freedoms, to destroy what America is built on, what America is supposed to really be about. Most of my friends have questions about what happened on 9-11, and we'd like to know answers, and we're very disappointed in President Bush's reaction to 9-11. My name is Les, I live here in uh, New York City, and uh, I'm part of a contingent that has, has vigils here at Ground Zero every Saturday. We've been doing it since uh, January, actually. And I've uh, seen a lot of interesting things, heard a lot of interesting things from people. A few just happened today. Uh, a woman came up saying that uh, her family received a phone call from a, a family friend. She was told by this family friend on September 10th, the family friend was a Navy SEAL, uh, told not to show up in Lower Manhattan tomorrow, which was of course the 11th, there's going to be a major event. MSNBC investigated the hundreds of reports of individuals in the towers being told not to go to work that day or being told to get out early that morning. And they found out that, yes, it was not an urban legend. It was true. They found hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of witnesses. And then the Israeli instant messaging company, Odigo, admitted publicly, told Haratz, one of the biggest papers in Israel, that yes, they got a warning and instant messaged hundreds of their employees in the towers and told them to leave the building four hours before the planes slammed into it. This is on the record and cannot be ignored. Students pointed up at the towers and told their school teachers in the weeks before 9-11 that those buildings are about to come down. They're about to be destroyed. And then on top of this, we have the public officials being warned. Total evidence of prior knowledge. And while we were in New York, we talked to dozens of eyewitnesses who had been personally warned themselves but were afraid to come public. Some have been told to keep their mouths shut. I was a rescue worker. I will say that I spoke to a, a cop uh, on 9-11 who said that it was going to come down. I don't know how he knew that. He did tell me before... Uh, it happened before the fact that it was coming down. The widows from the police department and the fire department were standing at the new school and back the, for the two days, and they were screaming at the media, please pay attention. We got phone calls. We listened that their husbands or their children were saying there's explosives coming on, on like the 23rd, 26th floor before they actually, the buildings went down. And the media started laughing and said, we have no time to hear you. Larry Silverstein originally owned Building 7, and a few months before 9-11, he bought the entire complex, all seven of the buildings, and then he took out a record insurance policy on them. Building 7 and what happened to it is so important because the official story is two jets flew into the buildings, we all agree on that, and that their jet fuel caused the steel to melt and caused them to collapse. But then we look at Building 7, which was the furthest away of any of these buildings from Tower 1 and 2, and it wasn't even damaged, but later that afternoon caught on fire. Now they've rebuilt Building 7. Here's Tower 1 and 2. Obviously, you all know those were hit by jet aircraft. And then we have Building 7, the furthest away from all the other buildings. Building 7 was 47 stories tall. Building 7 was not hit by an aircraft. Building 7 did not catch fire from these buildings. But later in the afternoon, mysteriously, it caught on fire. And then after 4.30 p.m., 
the firefighters told everybody to get back. They were, quote, going to pull the building, the demolition term for demolishing one. They told Associated Press reporters, get back, we're going to pull it. And this building that wasn't hit by a plane that had no damage to it collapsed symmetrically. Building 7 was a block away where my hand is, but the red flashing square is where Bankers Trust still stands today. It had Tower 1 fall onto it, but just had light damage. The owner, Larry Silverstein, of the entire complex, got on TV and said that they had blown up Building 7. He said they pulled it, demolition. Well, Silverstein owned them all. Oh, Silverstein owned all the buildings. Yeah. How many buildings are gone? All of them. How many is that? That's right. That plane wasn't, that, I, that building, for that six. building wasn't hit by a plane. Nine buildings are gone. Yeah. Thousands of people lost their That lives. building. Hundreds more. No, 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 and there's an official U.S. government plan to carry out the attacks. He imploded that building on himself. He admitted it. He said it on television. He, he brought that building out. Yes. Larry Silverstein. So you understand? Larry, Larry, Larry Silverstein on, on America Rebuilding on PBS said that they blew up Building 7. They blew up 7. Even right. though... Hey, yeah. they, he saw it. Did you see it on PBS? Yeah, he pulled it. He said on PBS, he said, we pulled the building. PBS. Oh, yeah, he pulled the building. Pelted by debris when the North Tower collapsed, seven burned until late afternoon, allowing occupants to evacuate to safety. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. Yeah, he said we're going to pull. He said we're going to pull the building. Silverstein he said to we're going to sell, we're going to pull the building. And we got the firemen saying they pulled it. I mean, Silverstein goes on PBS and says it, and we're the weirdos when he says it on TV. Unbelievable. Let's see that one more time. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. It takes demolition experts weeks to prepare for the destruction of a building. How do they do it on 9-11 in just a few hours? In the tragic days after 9-11, many prominent engineers across the world went public and said, there's no way that fire destroyed any of those buildings. It's never happened to a modern building. Buildings have burned for six, seven days before, and it hasn't happened. The answer was hidden in plain view. Larry